All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to make menus in Python. Um, this is going to be a difficult one because menus in PySimple GUI, which we're going to use, look so much better on Windows than they do on Mac. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to make some drop-down windows that um, appear as if they're through the operating system. Uh, we're going to create some drop-downs within our application that are really actually buttons, but um, function as menus, and then some more simple drop-downs just to do some um, selection of data, or in this case, formats. Um, again, in a Windows PC or in a Windows operating system, this would actually be right here. Um, this would not sort of do the weird thing it's doing right now, which is um, going in and out of transparency. And this will also just look like a button. There wouldn't be these arrows right here. So things would be a bit more seamless, but fortunately I don't have access to a Windows PC, so um, I'll just have to show you what to do on a Mac. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to build uh, this right here. And what we're going to do is we need to define a layout, much as, which, much as we would for um, typical uh, what for typical PySimple GUI applications. Um, and it's going to be a 2D array. So right here we've got the outer array, and then we have a series of inner arrays. Um, and each inner array uh, generally represents a different uh, header option right here. So the first one is file. And inside of file, we have open, save, and exit. Hence, we have our header right here as the first element. And then we've got another array with our subsequent elements. Um, similarly, right here, we have edit, and we then we have paste. Um, so if you open this up right here, we've got paste with actually two options. Um, so we've got paste, and then right after paste, we have another array, and that signifies that these options correspond to this. Um, so these sub-options correspond to this option. Um, and then after that, um, after this, array right here, we've just got a, another menu option, and that corresponds to undo right here. All right. Um, so generally, if you want, these are going to be our headers, our first elements. And um, then our next layer, so our next array, or our adjacent array is going to be the options, the menu options. And then if you want any sub options, those are going to be, again, adjacent arrays inside, so separate arrays inside. Um, right here, we've got um, the last one, we've got help and about. Um, so with help, interestingly, in a Mac, it allows you to sort of search for some data. Um, and you could actually define um, sort of a help file there. And then we just have an about section, which is pretty standard. Um, so this actually wouldn't happen in, uh, in a Windows setup. That's something that's unique to Mac. But 2D array, and we've got our menu options right here. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to go ahead and define a layout like we usually do for PySimple GUI applications. So create a, t create a 2D array. And the first thing we're going to do is create a menu. So we're going to say um, first our first inner array is going to be sg.menu. And then we're going to have uh, menu def, which really just, is just short for menu definition. And that's corresponding to um, what we just specified right up here. So menu def. Um, text color equals black. So this is going to be the text color of our menu. Um, this isn't actually that relevant right now because of what we're about to do next. We're just going to say font equals system default. Um, and then pad 10, 10, which is just putting some spacing around each menu option. Um, now, what we're actually doing here, we'll just close these parentheses here first. Um, Let's see, pad equals, okay. So what we're actually doing here is we've selected font equals system default. So what that actually does is allow um, the font to blend into whatever is specified by the Mac operating system, which actually, in my opinion, looks much better. We'll go back and mess those settings later, but for now, that is what creates our menu. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, create uh, this right here, which is called a button menu, all right? Um, because technically it is a button. And again, this is sort of doing something weird with like sort of becoming transparent and um, returning to uh, visibility based on whether it's focused on. Um, I haven't really found a way to fix that, unfortunately, but it doesn't happen on a Windows PC. So it's just one of the more, one of the additional deficiencies to using menus and Macs. But we're gonna say sg.buttonmenu, um, and then we're gonna say, um, we're just gonna specify the title of that menu. 
So right here, um, if we actually focus in on it, we can see the text here is button menu. And we specify that in our first input right here. We'll just say button menu. Um, and then menu def equals button menu def. So actually, this menu def option, we named um, our 2D array menu def right here. And we just use that as sort of the first um, input for sg.menu element. But right here, we actually have a, an option called menu def. And we're going to create a uh, menu definition to sort of specify the structure here to correspond to that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're just going to create a, another 2D array called button menu def. Um, and that's going to go like this. So we'll do that. And right here, we've basically got these four options, and then we have a, we have three sub options right here. So let's go ahead and let's uh, create that. So we're going to have a file. It's going to be your first option. We're going to have option. Um, and then because we have some sub options right for that, we're going to have an additional uh, array inside. And we're going to have one, two, uh, three, and that's just corresponding. These are all strings that are corresponding to um, open and then one, two, three. And after that, um, we're gonna after that we're gonna have save properties gonna be another string and then exit. All right. Um, so that's that's just going right in here to specify the structure of our menu. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just specify the border width. And again, it isn't so visible right here, but um, particularly in a Windows application, this would actually appear as a button, and you'd be able to, it would have some width to it. Um, border width, and we'll just say 5 pixels, or generally be 5. And then we're going to specify the key so that we can actually um, get uh, some input so we can react to what option is being selected. All right. So that's that. All right, next, um, we're just going to go ahead and create uh, this right here. Um, it's just part of the example, um, not particularly relevant to what we're doing, but I'll just go ahead and create it um, just to just so that we can replicate this application. Uh, 8010 mm, tooltip. Again, tooltips are another feature that I don't believe. So the idea behind a tooltip is you should be able to just actually hover over something. And when you hover over, you should get a little message that basically specifies what the point of a given element is, like kind of like instructions. It doesn't really work on a Mac. It does work on a Windows, and that's another exception right there. Um, and then we're going to then we're going to create this input right here, so we can kind of demonstrate um, this. We're going to have sg dot uh, text file name. We'll have a classic input, just sg dot input, and then we'll have our s. We'll have our option menu. So this is called an option menu right here. And we're not going to actually put all of these options in because it's just tedious and not really necessary. But uh, we'll say option menu. And um, we're going to specify an array of values that will go into this menu. I think for now we'll just do um, so. That's going to be values equals uh, an array. So we'll do dot txt. The idea is that we're specifying some file extensions right here. So dot txt dot pdf and uh, dot jpeg dot jpg. And so. That's to specify these right here. Um, really, we're just specifying the first three, so that's all we should see when we run our own application, um, and not this dummy application. And then once we've done that, we can say uh, default value. Well, we should actually specify dot doc. Well, we'll just say default value uh, equals dot txt. Um, and key equals data type, again, to get the um, output, or to get the selection, basically to get what the user has selected um, in that particular window. All right, that's cool. So this one right here was just called an option menu. Pretty simple. This one probably works the best in Mac. I mean, this one works as well. 
Um, but this one just generally is kind of janky in a, in a Mac. Um, and okay, so that's about it right there. We're just going to finish off with a save and cancel button. The idea is this is, so, this is supposed to be kind of like a text editor. So save and cancel. Or actually, let's just do exit. That uh, cancels a bit, not necessary. All right, now we're going to um, go to creating our um, event loop. And this is where we're going to kind of handle events and show how to handle uh, events from our drop down menus. So, we'll while true, um, event values equals window.read. Um, oh, we actually need to create our uh, window object right here. So window equals sg.window, uh, menu example. And then layout. Um, okay, so basically like right here, um, we're just gonna have if event in sg.win closed and then exit. And then we're going to break if we select any of those options just to exit out. Um, we're also going to kind of play around with different events that we can get from um, uh, from these different menus right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to react to someone clicking on open in this menu right here. Okay. Um, so if we can just say elif event uh, equals open. Then we can just print the message to the console, um, print, click to open button. Just to tell us that we have um, gotten that event. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say elif um, event equals uh, save. Mm. So actually we've got a save right here. So we'll just say save file. So the thing is, with these, we need to use um, all of these different options should be unique so that they don't come into conflict with each other. Um, so if I just type in save right here, and we have a save right here and a save right here, it would be kind of confusing. I think probably what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll play with that once we've created something that's functional. For now, let's just click, let's just hit save file. And how this is going to work is when we click save file, we're going to be able to get access to our data type right here. Okay, so with an option menu, we're not getting an event, but we're just going to get a value. So we'll print out uh, values um, and then data type. So that's the difference, actually. Like right here with these drop down menus, we can just react to, um, well, not these drop down menus, but specifically with this menu right here, we can just react to an event. Um, with uh, the option menu, we're just going to have to uh, get a value. And the same is actually true of um, this uh, button menu right here. So we're going to have if um, values equals B menu, or that's corresponding to this key right up here. Um, and this data type type corresponds to the key right here. Uh, so let B menu. Okay, and again, if someone clicks on that, then we'll, we'll, we'll just react to properties right here. So values B menu um, is equal to properties. Then we are going to print selected the properties option. We'll just say print selected properties option in the button menu. Um, right here, we'll also just add another statement. So print will just say selected uh, data type from the options menu. So we're just going to go ahead and run our first iteration right here, and then we'll play around a bit with it and just see what happens. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's go and run this. I'm sure we'll run into some kind of error, but let's go back right here. Okay, so looks like we've got something wrong with our arrays right here. So we've got sg.text. Um, oh, okay, commas, of course, cool. All right, let's run that again. Mm, okay, so it looks like we've got a problem right here, um, line 24. Mm, okay, 
So right here it says uh, we're adding a menu option, a list index out of range. So it seems like we've done something wrong right here. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the problem is. Okay, so it looks like the problem here is that we actually um, had too many outer arrays. So we can just get rid of this and get rid of this right here. Um, and so it looks like we just need, because we've got one right here and one right here, we didn't need another outer array right there. So we can just kind of define it like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's run our application. We'll go ahead and do this right here. And okay, so we've got our menu right up here. Um, we've got our button menu right here. And we've got uh, this one right here. All right, so it looks like actually when we, um, so when I define it this way uh, with the, well, actually, there's not really a great reason why it happened this way, but for some reason now when I focus, okay, there it is, there it is again. That's why this menu is really finicky. For a second, it looked like it was working all right, but then it didn't. Um, so, all right, what we're going to do now is we're going to first test out our open right here. So we're just going to click open, and you can see right here we've got a, a message that's clicked open button. Now let's go ahead and click save file. Let's select something right here. So right here we've got text because we specified our default values being text. So let's go ahead and click on text, um, or let's go ahead and click on PDF, and let's just click Save File. And right here we can see printed out Save File and select a data type from the options. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to test our button menu right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, let's see, Option 1. Um, so actually, we're only going to react if, it, if we've selected Properties. Um, so actually I'll just select properties right there and we've got selected properties option in the button menu. Um, so what you could actually do is, I mean, you could just have some sort of, um, we don't really have switch statements in Python, but if values B menu equals this, then do this else. If values B menu equals this, do this. So that's kind of how we would have to deal with that. So the most important thing to remember is that the button menu gets returned to as, um, in values, the, um, option menu gets returned to us in values, and it is just this menu up here that returns an event to us. Um, that kind of makes it a bit easier to um, to basically define like the same um, menu value in this menu and in this menu and, for, and to have it still function appropriately. Now again, like if you wanted to work with an internal menu, so if you wanted to react to one, we could just change this for B menu to one right here. So let's go ahead and give that a try. We'll just exit out of this and let's run it. So if we just select one right here, um, then we can see that we printed out um, this right here. So it doesn't really matter, even though it's kind of nested inside, it doesn't really matter what happens. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, one last thing that I do want to show you is so right here, um, for example, um, particularly, it doesn't really work in a Mac, but particularly in a Windows PC, you can actually put an image here instead of this. Um, so the way that you would do that is you would import an image right here into uh, the menu bar right here. And we can just take that from here, from our demo application and put it right here. And then you can specify, um, you can just say image uh, file name. equals menu.png. I'd recommend putting it in the same directory that you have your code in, um, so that way uh, you, can easy, you can pretty easily access it. So let's go ahead and give this a try. We'll go ahead and exit out of this, and let's go ahead and give this a try. All right, looks like we've got a problem right here. We need to put our comma in. All right. Okay, so this looks really messed up right here, and that is because this is a Mac. If this were um, a Windows PC, you'd actually see a pretty nice um, button, it's kind of difficult to see right here, but it would be a white menu button. You would not have this drop down bar right here, and it would just look much more aesthetically aesthetically pleasing. Um, I just wanted to show that to you. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend using this in a Mac because for this very reason, but I just wanted to show this to you because if you're on a Windows PC, that is a valid option. Um, anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful, was useful to you, even if it didn't look the greatest. Um, have a nice day, and good luck with your PySimple GUI applications.